Good evening to all of you. Welcome to AOI 2021 online. My name is Rain Clement, and I want to officially welcome each and every one of you to our online conference. We are so happy that you are here and that you are able to join us. Thank you so much for being here. And we praise God that this day is finally here. We've been waiting for this day and we have been so excited for AOI to begin. And we hope that you are just as excited as we are to be blessed through this conference. Now, it is unfortunate that this year, because of the pandemic um, that we are affected with or affected by, we are not able to have our conference in person as we planned last year. And you know, um, it's not only here in Malaysia, but other parts in the world also are affected by this pandemic. But we praise God that we are still able to have this conference online. And you know, one of the best things or, or the benefits of having it online is that we can be connected with our brothers and sisters all over the world. So I am excited to see what God is about to do as we are connected here spiritually through this AOI 2021 online conference. So on behalf of the AOI team, I wanna welcome each and every one of you again to our AOI online conference this year. And as you can see, our theme this year is looking unto Jesus. Our theme last year, if you remember, was no turning back. And you see friends, the only way that you cannot turn back is if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, if you keep looking unto Jesus. And I hope that that is what we will commit to do throughout this conference and even after that. Now at this time, I wanna um, give this um, moment to Pastor Tan Meng Cheng, who is our, the president of our PEM, our Peninsula Malaysia Mission here in Malaysia. And he will be giving us the keynote address. So at this time, Pastor Tan, I, give, I pass this time to you. Thank you. Good evening to dear brother and sister in Christ to all our viewer on the virtual platform for this online meeting again. AOY conference is back again this year. Just as uh, Brother Rain have just said, nothing can stop us from meeting together for another two more weeks of solid Bible study, time of praying together, and for more practical workshop that will enhance your ministry skill as we seek the Lord for his guidance to do his work before his second coming. On behalf of uh, Peninsula Malaysia Mission, I would like to welcome everyone today and for the next two weeks from 11 to 25th of July, together we will learn about the Bible. So I'm happy and excited about this meeting. On behalf of PM also, I would like to welcome all our AOI speakers for 2021 from various countries this year. We'd like to thank you for your time and willingness to share with us God's message. May God bless you all as you share the word of God to his people. Our uh, chairman will introduce them one by one every day. So let us focus our mind now with my uh, short message. I would like to begin by saying this. I would like to hope to see that God's church will be revived and finish his work on earth before his second coming. It is my hope to see that our church member will be born again, disciple for Jesus as we respond to GC uh, theme for 2021 to 2025, that is, I will go. Each and every one of us must bear the responsibility to share the gospel to the world by serving fervently, diligently, enthusiastically, and with urgency. We can do that because we know that God has promised us the power and through his word, he will guide each and every one of us. I would like to share a quotation 
from the Great Controversy, page 593, paragraph 1, that says, Scripture should be the, their safeguard against the influence of false teachers and the delusive power of spirit of darkness. At every revival of God's work, the prince of evil is aroused to more intense activity. He is now putting forth his utmost effort for a final struggle against Christ and his follower. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Do you believe that we are living at this time? Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scripture. I'm glad that through God's word, we will be able to distinct, to, to be able to distinguish the truth and the false. By their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be tested. Let us remember this counsel. I would like to tell a story. The story is about a man who was walking in a desert during one dark night when a voice suddenly said to him, pick up some small stones, pebbles, and put them in your pocket, and tomorrow you will be both happy and sad. The man, of course, was not sure whether he wants to do that, but however he obeyed, he stooped down and picked up a handful of pebbles and put them in his pocket. The next morning, he reached into his pocket and he found that it is diamonds and, you know, a precious stone of all kinds. And he was indeed both happy and sad. Happy because he had taken some, but sad because he hadn't taken more. Therefore, I would like to invite every one of you here. Let us take our Bible and study it diligently. I want you to read your Bible these next two weeks, and you will discover the gems, the precious stone in it, and you will be blessed, I'm sure, for the rest of your life. In the Bible, the author say, how much better to get wisdom than go. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. I fully agree with what the Bible said. You know, Seventh-day Adventist has a great responsibility. In this book, Evangelism, the author say, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. We must be ready for that, brother and sister. The author continues to say, they have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angels' messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Yes, God has called his church in this day for a very important responsibility as he called the ancient Israel. The message of the first, second, and third angels. Let us talk it, pray it, sing it, fill the world with the message of his truth and keep pressing on into the region beyond. You know, this pandemic has caused so many hindrance, obstacles for us to reach out to the world. But however, I believe that even though this mission seemed impossible, but everything is still possible because we serve a great God. Therefore, I would like to encourage every one of you. You know, this work in which we are engaged is a grand a holy, a sacred work. We cannot for a moment be off our guard. Look not to man is the counsel, but keep our eyes focused. Keep Christ in view. 
This is what I would like to challenge every one of us to do. I believe God is going to do great things through His church, through His people, through all the young people out there in our church. I believe that God will bless you and guide you. So for the next uh, two weeks, let us focus our eyes on Jesus, looking unto Jesus. That is the key of success in your ministry, in your life. May God bless each and every one of you richly as we spend some time together to study the Bible, praying together, encourage one another. Let us pray for our speakers so that they will impart God's knowledge to us, equip us and enable us to do His work more effectively. Thank you and God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Tan, for uh, the keynote address. And yes, indeed, it is our hope that as a result of this year's conference, that we as God's people will experience revival and reformation, that more men and women, especially the young people, will rise up to this high calling that God has placed in our lives, that we can truly finish the work and so that we can go home. Amen. So I hope that this is what God can ach will achieve through this year's conference. Now, at this time, I want to introduce um, the speaker for our opening session. His name is Joseph Tian. And he is no stranger to most of us here because he is the president of Army of Youth Asia. And this evening, he will be bringing us the message. Now, Joseph is... Um, currently studying to be a dentist. But you know, even though he's busy with his studies, he has a mind for God's work. He has a mind for God's ministry and, and to finish God's work. And truly he has, um, you know, he has contributed his time and his service here in AOY. And I know that this evening he has a message for us. And I pray that we would be inspired as, as he shares his message with, with us at this time. So Joseph, I pass the time to you and um, he will lead us with the opening prayer and also bless us with the message. Joseph, the time is now yours. Thank you, thank you, Rain. So good evening, everyone. Good evening, AOY. I would like to once again extend a warm welcome to all of you who are joining from all over the world. I truly wanna thank God that even in the midst of this um, unprecedented time, that uh, we are still able to gather together in this uh, virtual platform to listen to the word of God. And I know that we are all here because we want to be filled with God's word and we want to be filled with his spirit as well. So without a further ado, um, let's just go straight into the message and let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to truly thank you and praise you for um, for your blessings uh, in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for um, this conference. Thank you, Lord, for AOI. Thank you, Lord, for all the people that have uh, tuned in to listen to your word. And Father, I'd like to pray that um, at this moment that you please um, be with each one of us. May you speak to our hearts, Lord, as we um, hunger and thirst after your word, Lord, I pray that truly we would experience um, a change in our lives that we would learn what it means to truly look unto Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless our session tonight and may you um, bless us as we listen to your word. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the theme that was chosen for this year's conference is looking unto Jesus. right? And this is such a fitting theme for the time that we're living in. right? Um, all all around us today, when we turn on the news, what do we see? We see, you know, wars, we see pestilences, we see a global pandemic that's happening right now. We see troubles, we see social unrest, we see political instability, like, you know, in Malaysia right now. Um, we see economic collapses, broken families, and the list goes on. And, you know, when we look at all these events that are happening around us, it's very easy for us to feel, you know, it's very easy for our hearts to be filled with hopelessness, with despair, with sadness, right? 
But, you know, as Christians, we know that looking unto Jesus, that is where we can find hope. That is where we can find joy. That's where we can find peace. And so this phrase, looking unto Jesus, is taken from the book of Hebrews. So if you have your Bibles, maybe I will screen share as well. Um, you can turn to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, we will just look at two verses. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. So here the Bible says, notice how the chapter begins with the word wherefore. Now, usually when you see the word wherefore, right, it means that the author is writing in continuation to what was said before in the previous chapter, right? And if you look into Hebrews 11, we know that Hebrews 11 is a, is a famous chapter, right? It's well known for being the hall of faith where we can find different characters in the Bible, in the Old Testament, men and women of great faith, right? We read about the story of Abel, from Abel to Abraham, to Moses, to Joseph, um, to Samson, all these great men and women of faith who had firsthand experience of what it's like to live a life of faith. And so as we are called to learn from the faith experience of these people, we run into this chapter in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, which begins with the word wherefore, or in continuation, or as a result, or in conclusion. So here we read, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, who are these witnesses? They are the people that we read about in Hebrews chapter 11. They are the great men and women of faith um, that have experienced what it's like to live a life of faith. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So here we find that Paul, who many believe was the author of Hebrews, here Paul uses a metaphor to describe the Christian life. He uses a metaphor of a race to describe the Christian life. And, you know, when you think about a race, right, um, there are two kinds of race, right? There is a sprint and there is a marathon, right? A sprint is where you run as fast as you can for a short distance. Whereas in a marathon, you run with the mindset that, you know, you need to conserve energy. You need to pace yourself. Um, why? Because you, your, your goal is not to run for a short distance, right? You want to cover a long distance. And for that, you need to conserve energy, right? So, you know, when you think about it, anyone can sprint, right? Anyone, anybody can run as fast as they can for a short distance, right? But not everyone can run a marathon because it takes endurance. It takes patience. It takes perseverance. You know, at times you'll feel like giving up, right? At times you'll feel like your legs, your heart just can't take it anymore. At times you'll feel like, you know, you feel like your legs are just so heavy that you can't even take another step but you just got to keep moving forward, keep pushing, keep taking one step at a time, right? And you know, friends, in many ways, the Christian life or the Christian race, as Paul puts it, as the writer of Hebrews puts it, is like a marathon, right? And from these two verses um, in Hebrews chapter 12, I would like to share with you all four keys to staying in this marathon, in this Christian race. Four keys to staying in the race. You know, because as Christians, we want to finish this race, don't we? We don't just want to be in the race. We don't just want to start the race. We want to finish the race. We want to stay in the race, right? Because, you know, the moment we accept Christ, that is when we are in the race. But what is more important then being in the race, then starting the race, just like running a marathon, is what? Finishing the race. So 
what are the keys to staying in the race or finishing the race? Let's, let's see what can we learn from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. So the first key, notice from the verse, we need to do what? We need to lay aside every weight. Key number one, lay aside every weight. You know, for those of you who run marathons, for those of you who have, you know, jogged for long distances, you know that weights are something that are used only as part of the training, right? Before the race, right? Some people run with ankle weights to add resistance so that, you know, during the race, the race when you remove the weights, you will feel like, you know, you're as light as a feather and you technically can run faster, right? But no one in their right mind will run with weights strapped to their body, right? In a race at least, right? And you know, in fact, Greek, uh, ancient Greek athletes, right? They used to run in races, they used to compete in races naked, right? In order to maximize their performance because they feel that their clothes only adds weight and they feel that it will hinder their performance, right? So to lay aside every weight, is to remove the things that hinders our Christian walk. And what are these things that hinders us? It may not necessarily be something negative, right? It could be something innocent, um, but they are just adding weight, right? It could be something like our work. It could be our studies. It could be our friends. You know, whatever it is, we know personally, we know in our hearts, what are the things that are hindering us in this Christian race? And if they are hindering us in the race, God is telling us that we need to lay aside those weights. So that's key number one. We need to lay aside every weight. Key number two, lay aside the sin which does so easily beset us. You know, notice how the writer of Hebrews or Paul right, puts it here. He did not say, lay aside sin, which is very generic, right? It can be any sin. But look at the language that he uses here. He said, lay aside the sin. And what does it imply? The sin is very specific. It's very personal. It is a specific sin that we know we are struggling with. And we are, thought, we are told here that we need to lay aside the sin which does so easily beset us. You know, friends, what are the besetting sins that seems to grab hold of our lives? What are the sins in your life that you know you shouldn't do, that we know it's against God's will, that we know that God does not approve? We want to stop it, but, and yet we still do it. Right? What are these sins? that are holding us back. You know, no one else may know about those sins, but we know what these sins are and God knows. And he is telling us today that we need to lay aside those sins because they are holding us back from finishing the race. Key number three, we need to run with patience. You know, another word for patience, if you look in another translation, um, it also means to run with endurance, right? What does it mean to run with patience or to run with endurance? In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, here we find that Paul uses the same analogy of a race to describe the Christian life. And here writing to the church of Corinth, Paul, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the price. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I, thus, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body, and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. 
So how does Paul run with endurance? Here we see that Paul, Paul says that he disciplines his body. He brings it into subjection. He exercises self-control. He is temperate in all things. And you know, just like running a marathon, to have endurance, to train your cardiovascular system, to be able to run long distances, what do you need to do? You can't eat like how everyone else eats, right? You can't just eat greasy foods every day, eat McDonald's and KFC every day, expecting to be able to run 10 kilometers, right? You can't live like how everyone else lives if you, if you want to run a marathon, if you want to finish a marathon, right? You gotta be disciplined. You gotta be temperate. You gotta exercise self-control, right? So, you know, how many of us are naturally patient, are naturally disciplined and have self-control? You know, I for one can admit that I'm not, I'm not naturally disciplined, having self-control or patient. But you know, friends, what are these characteristics? They are the fruit of the spirit, right? In other words, you know, if you want to run with patience, if you want to run with endurance, with discipline, with self-control, what do we need to have? We need to have the Holy Spirit, right? Because these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So now, let's think about it. In order to run the Christian race, we are called to lay aside every weight. We are called to lay aside the sin that does so easily beset us. We are called to run the race with patience and endurance. But we cannot do these things on our own. It's impossible, right? How many of us have tried changing our bad habits? How many of us have tried removing our addictions? How many of us have tried to form good habits? But somehow we try and we try and we try, but we just can't seem to, you know, we just can't seem to get rid of those bad habits. We just constantly seem to always end up in failure, right? But you know what, friends? Yes, this is impossible. This is an impossible task for us. But God says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, the Bible says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And in, this brings us to our next key, the final and the most important key for us to staying in the race. Because you know, friends, many times we find ourselves being out of this race, this Christian race. Many times we find ourselves in failure and in defeat. The reason is because many times this is the key that we are missing in our lives. So what is the biggest key to keeping us in the race? Verse 2 in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible reads, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. You know, this is the theme of our conference, right? Looking unto Jesus. Jesus is the key to staying in the race. Jesus is the answer to our problems. He is the only one that can give us victory over our besetting sins. He is the only one that, that can give us rest from our heavy burdens. But you know, oftentimes what happens is, you know, instead of looking to Jesus, we look at ourselves. We look at all our failures. We look at our weaknesses. Um, we look at all our deep disappointments. We look at our past. And we think to ourselves and we get discouraged, you know. Why is this race so hard? Why is this race so burdensome? Why don't I find any joy in this race? You know, friends, we cannot look at Jesus and self at the same time. Consider Peter, 
the only men who have, you know, the only men who ever walked on water apart from Jesus, right? You know, as Jesus invited him to step out of the boat and come, in Desire of Ages, Ellen White comments on this. She says, looking unto Jesus, Peter walks securely. But as in self-satisfaction, he glances back towards his companions in the boat. His eyes are turned from the Savior. The wind is boisterous. The waves roll high and come directly between him and the master. And he is afraid. For a moment, Christ is hidden from his view and his faith gives way. He begins to sink. But while the billows talk with death, Peter lifts his eyes from the angry waters and fixing them upon Jesus Christ. Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus grasps the outstretched hand and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? When trouble comes upon us, how often are we like Peter? We look upon the waves instead of keeping our eyes fixed upon the Savior. Our footsteps slide and the proud waters go over our souls. You know, Jesus did not bid Peter to come to him that he should perish. He does not call us to follow him and then forsake us. Fear not, he says, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. You know, friends, the key to staying in this Christian race is to look unto Jesus. To take our eyes away from ourselves, to take our eyes away from our worries, our problems, our doubts, from the things of this world, from our friends, from bad influences, and focusing our eyes on Jesus. You know, Jesus is the answer to all our needs. Jesus is the only one that can make the impossibilities of our life possible. He is the only one that can help us right above the storms of life. And he is the only one that can save us from sinking beneath the waves of despair and discouragement. You know, Friends, I believe there is a reason why we are all here today. We are not attending this conference, this online conference by chance. We are all here because we realize that there is something missing in our lives. We realize that we have so many weaknesses. We realize that we have so many failures. And we realize that we lack the endurance to run this race. And you know, friends, my prayer for all of us is that as we listen to, you know, the word of God beginning tonight, as we listen to the many workshops, to the sermons throughout the week, as we attend the united prayers in the morning, that we would truly be convicted by the Holy Spirit, that we would truly learn what it means to look unto Jesus, to turn our eyes upon Jesus, to look full at his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So friends, what is the biggest key for us to stay in the race? It is to look unto Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for... Um, Thank you for the message this evening. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts, for reminding us that, Lord, yes, we may have so many weaknesses. We may have so many past failures. We may have 
done so many wrongs. We may have so many besetting sins in our lives that seem to have a hole in our lives. Oh Lord, we recognize today that only by looking unto Jesus that we can have victory over our besetting sins, that we can have truly experience what it means to have freedom in Christ. Oh Lord, I pray for each one of us who are present here in this Zoom call, in the Facebook Live. Lord, you know our desires. You know each one of our needs. And Lord, as we um, listen to your word, as we seek you wholeheartedly, I pray that you will fill us, fill our hearts with your spirit. Help us, Lord, to experience you in a personal way that we may truly experience victory in our lives. And Lord, I would like to submit the rest of this evening, the rest of this conference into your hands. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Joseph, for uh, that inspiring message. Thank you so much for the reminder that truly we are all running this race. And the only way that we can finish this race is if we look to Jesus. So may we today look to Jesus because he's the only one who can help us. Once again, thank you so much. At this time, um, <clears throat> I want to introduce our speakers and also the workshops that we are that will we will be having for a conference. I'm sure you've seen them through our Facebook, um, through our post, but I will just take this time to share just so that everyone knows um, what to expect in the next few weeks. So let me share my screen real quick. Just give me a moment here. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, so these are um, the workshops uh, speakers that we'll be having. Uh, the first speaker that we have is Dr. Subodh Pandit, and he will be presenting um, a workshop entitled God, Fact or Fiction. Now, Dr. Pandit is, has um, spent many years in, um, in his journey of, um, you know, in his intellectual journey of, you know, finding um, the truth, finding um, the truth for, for God and for spirituality. And in his search, in his journey, he has come to the full understanding of God and, and what it means to worship God and, and, what it, and how to understand who God is. And in his workshop, he will be sharing um, his journey and he will, be also, he will also be sharing keys, um, different keys and principles on how you can share your faith, how you can defend your faith in God um, to other people. The next speaker we have is Pastor Stephen Bohr. Now, Pastor Stephen Bohr is based in the U.S., and he is the speaker director of his ministry called Secrets Unsealed. And in his work, his workshop is entitled A Faith to Live and Die For. Now, in his workshop, he will be going through the book of Daniel, and he will be sharing from the life and experience of Daniel and also his three friends on what it means to be faithful. How can we stand faithful for God in these last days? And he will be sharing practical keys on how we can apply those things into our personal lives. Now, the next speaker we have um, is Pastor Pavel Goya. Now, Pastor Pavel Goya is an international speaker, and he currently pastors in one of the churches in the U.S. He also works at the General Conference, and his workshop is entitled Personal Revival. Now, in his workshop, he'll be sharing um, how we can experience God in a personal way how we can be one with God, how we can be filled with the spirit, 
and how we can be one with God's mission. And he will be sharing personal experiences, experiences from his life as well. And, you know, testimonies and how we can apply that and how we can experience personal revival as well. The next speaker we have is Pastor Steve Wahlberg. Now, he is the speaker director for his ministry called White Forest Media. And in his workshop entitled End Time Insights, he will be going to the book of Revelation to show us um, what is the personal preparation for us in this time. You know, we're hit with this COVID um, pandemic at this time. What does it mean? Where are we in this world's history? And how can we truly pre prepare for the coming of Jesus? He will be sharing practical um, insights from the book of Revelation. Uh, we also have Candice and Carla um, who are from Australia and they will be sharing a workshop entitled Subtle Deceptions or actually the new name that they have come up with is Discordant Deceptions. And in this seminar, they will share the deceptions that Satan has put, uh, that he has hid uh, when it comes to music. You know, many of, many of us are not aware of, you know, the little deceptions that uh, Satan has hit when it comes to music, even worship music, even Christian music. And they will be sharing principles on how we can identify what is the right music for us to listen to. How can we know um, whether a certain music is good or bad for us? And they will also, it, it will be very eye-opening. And so that this is a seminar that you do not want to miss out. I want to encourage all of you to, to join. Um, we also have Dr. Samuel Wang. Now his uh, workshop will be um, most, mostly for the Chinese speaking as he will be speaking in Chinese. And, and his workshop is entitled Encounter Jesus Throughout the Bible. So as he goes through the Bible, he will be showing you how you can encounter Jesus at every single point in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in prophecy, in poems, in, in the book of Psalms and Proverbs, how you can encounter Jesus throughout the Bible and how you can have a personal experience with him. Now for our plenary speakers, we have four. The first one is Pastor An Anil Kanda, who is a pastor now in the US. Now Pastor Anil Kanda used to be Hindu, but now he is Christian and he's uh, you know, he's serving God in the ministry, and he will be sharing a message with us on, on one of the weekends as well. We have Pastor Justin Kim, who works at, at the General Conference as um, he works for uh, the, the assistant for Sabbath school and also personal ministry there at the General Conference, and he will also be sharing a message with us. We have Christopher Cram, who is the speaker director for his ministry called Joel Media Ministry, Joel Ministry. And he will also be sharing a message with us and also the final charge. And the last speaker we have for our plenaries is Pastor Justin Taroshan, who is from Australia, and he will also be blessing us with a message. So those are our speakers and also um, our speakers for workshops and also for um, the plenaries that we will, we will have for the next two weeks. So I wanna encourage all of you to come and join us. I know that this will be a great time to experience God's blessing. It's a time where you can hear God's voice speaking directly to you. And it's a time where you can truly be revived and reformed in your relationship with him. And if you have friends that, that need to be here, that you want to share this blessing with, please, please go ahead and share with them, share the link with them. And if you are watching on Facebook and you have not registered yet, go ahead and register, go to our website, aoiweb.org and please register so that we, you can join us. If you need translations, you're watching on Facebook and you need translations, you are mostly a Chinese speaker, you need to join Zoom. So go ahead and register, you will get the Zoom link and you can join us on Zoom where you can get the translations as well. Okay, so um, our next session will begin at 7.30. Uh, that will be our first workshop. And Dr. Pandit will be starting first. He will be giving the first workshop at 7.30 p.m. So once again, I want to invite all of you to come and join us there for our first workshop. You don't want to miss it. Invite your friends and come and join and be blessed. Okay, so at this time, we will end our opening session. We'll take a break and we will come back at 7.30.
Okay, so see you all in a bit. Take care and God bless each and every one of you. Bye.